Hello, 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 Stampers. Welcome to this week's Facebook Live. We are meeting a little bit early this week because it's retreat weekend, which means that I will be heading out tomorrow to Vegarville for a fun weekend of crafting. Fun. Oh, let's turn the volume down here. Okay. All right, there we go. Um, my name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Sherwood Park, Alberta, and I am excited to be here to share another project using a 12 by 12 pattern paper where we are going to use the entire piece of pattern paper. And we are a little crooked here. Let me just see if I can adjust this. Um, okay, that's a little bit better. All right, so today we are going to take this piece of pattern paper. We're going to use the entire piece and three sheets of eight and a half by 11 cardstock and one thick white card base. And we're going to create five cards and there will not be any of this DSP left at the end. I have been loving challenging myself to do this, to use up my pattern paper without a whole lot of waste. So I've shared several videos which you can catch up on my YouTube channel if you've missed them. Um, but today we're gonna use this one. Okay, so now it does not matter what pattern paper that you use when you create this card. This just happens to be the pattern paper that I have chosen. It will work best or will be easier if you choose a pattern paper that is not directional on either side. Okay, so this is from the Shining Christmas Patterned Paper Pack, so DSP Pack. It's a specialty paper pack. It's got um, a beautiful shiny finish on one side and then it's a matte finish on the other side. However, um, it was available yesterday, woke up this morning and it is no longer available. <laughs> um, and I'm not 100% sure that it's going to be coming back. So I apologize. I normally like to try to use things that you can get um, and it's possible that you won't be able to get this anymore. But thankfully, I'm sure if you're like me, you've got tons of paper in your collection that you can pull from. So we're going to start by cutting up this patterned paper. So I saved cutting it up so that I can show you just how simple this can be. All right, so what we're going to do is, again, because this is not directional, it doesn't matter how you have it in here. So I'm gonna line it up with the five inch mark and I'm gonna cut all the way down. And then I'm gonna rotate it and I'm gonna cut it at six inches. And then I'm going to score it at two and a quarter. So this is with the six and six inch length at the top. I'm scoring it at two and a quarter. One of them I'll score that way. One of them I'll score this way. Okay, so we'll set those two pieces aside. Now we're gonna bring this piece back and we're gonna cut it again at five inches. Rotate it. Cut it at six inches again. And again, we're gonna score at two and a quarter inches. So even though these are the same basic measurements, we are going to create four different cards using these four pieces. Then I'll we'll flip this over, two and a quarter inches. So each one of these pieces measures five inches by six inches and has been scored at two and a quarter inches. So we still have this two by 12 inch piece left. So what we're gonna do is we are going to cut it at, actually I don't need to do this. We're gonna cut it at five inches and then we're gonna cut it down the middle. So this is two inches, so I'm gonna cut it at one inch. And then I'm gonna cut this piece at five inches. Rotate and cut down the middle at one inch. 
Okay, so you've got four strips that measure one by five, and then you've got this square piece left. These are all gonna be for our last card that we create. So we're gonna set those aside, okay? All right, now we need to cut our patterned paper, or our cardstock. So I had mentioned that I have three pieces of coordinating cardstock. So I've got my neutral, which I've already cut that, and I'll share what I did with that in a moment. But you want two other colors that coordinate with your patterned paper. We're gonna take one of them, and we're gonna cut it at five and a half inches. and then rotate it and cut it at four and a quarter inches. So we have two pieces that measure four and a quarter by five and a half. And then from this leftover piece, we are going to cut at five and one eighth. And then rotate it and cut it at three and seven eighths. We're gonna do that for both pieces. Okay, we'll set those two pieces aside. We'll set those aside. We're gonna do exactly the same for the cherry cobbler or your second color. So I'm gonna start by cutting at five and a half inches. So I've got my 11 inch length at the top. I'll cut it at five and a half inches and then rotate it at four and a quarter. Set those two pieces aside and then we're going to cut it. We've got the short length at the top. We're going to cut it at five and one eighth. Rotate it and cut at three and seven eighths. Okay. And then I've got my white card base. And then I had mentioned that I pulled out a piece of white. So from this white piece, you wanna cut two pieces that measure four and a half by three and a half, okay? Um, and then the rest of the cardstock I used for die cutting bits and pieces for adding my focal points. All right, so we are gonna start by creating all of our bases. So I'm gonna take my four pieces of cardstock that measure five and a half by four and a quarter and my four pieces that measure three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And I've got those set aside here. And now I'm gonna fold along my score lines and use my bone folder to make it nice and crisp. So this is going to get mounted onto a piece of old olive. And then this piece, so now when I score, when you score, it creates like a little valley in your, or a little divot. And that's, I fold away from that divot. Now with this specialty paper, this has like a glossy finish. You kind of have to be a little bit careful. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a piece of cardstock over top to fold it because otherwise you'll scrape off that pattern. Okay, so this is the opposite. So this one, we're gonna take a piece of red. Actually, you know what? I think we're gonna do, we're gonna do green with this one. All right, and then we're gonna repeat this. We're gonna do the same thing. And we'll put red. And then this one, fold it in this way. Okay, so we've got our pieces. Now we're gonna set these ones aside. We're gonna bring them in and we are going to create our card bases. Okay, so for this one here, actually let's start with this one. We're just going to add adhesive. To the back of this and then pop it onto this mossy meadow and this is just going to give us a really narrow border all the way around the edges and then that is going to get mounted onto a piece of cherry cobbler so this is a quarter sheet of an eight and a half by eleven 
So our card is actually not going to open like a regular card. This flap is going to open to reveal a space for writing a message. All right, so there's our first card base. We'll set that aside. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing for this one. This is a great design if you want to showcase both sides of your patterned paper. And it's also a card design that works really well with six by six paper because this measures six inches by five inches and then you'll have a one inch strip left at the bottom that you can reserve for the fifth card that I'm going to create. Okay, so we're gonna add this one to a piece of cherry cobbler. Okay, and we'll tuck that under there. Now we're gonna bring this one in and this one we're gonna do a little bit different. So we're gonna do a landscape card for this one, but we're also going to create a pocket. So this is gonna go right on top of here so that we've got a 16th of an inch border. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive, just a narrow bead of adhesive up the side here and here. And then fold that over. And that is going to create a pocket. Now I do need to set something on top of this so that I don't have to sit here and hold it. So I'm just gonna put an ink pad on top. We'll slide it up out of the way. And then we're gonna repeat that same process on this one. So our the base of our cards are very similar, but they will be decorated slightly differently to make them look different. And because we've got a different pattern paper up top, then sh showing a little bit more, the card looks different. So they don't look like the same cards. So again, we're gonna create a pocket for this one. And I'm gonna set my ink pad on top. I'm gonna slide these out of the way. We're gonna let those set and then we'll come back to them and mount them onto our um, card bases. Okay, so we're gonna bring this first one back. So this is gonna open up like this, but we need something to make it pretty on the outside and also somewhere to write on the inside. So you could take a piece of white and add that over top, but then you're covering up all that beautiful pattern. So what I've done is I've taken the Countryside Corners dies, which I do not have here with me. These are the Countryside Corners. I've cut three different sizes. So I think this is the second or the third large, smallest, and then the next size up and the next size up. And you just want it, You. it's just gonna depend on the size of your greeting. So the first one that I created, my greeting goes down this way and so it went like this and open like this. However, um, this time I'm gonna do it like this and it's gonna open like this. All right, so I'm gonna take my greeting and I'm gonna use the Merry Christmas from the Brightest Glow stamp set. This stamp set is my absolute favorite stamp set for Christmas greetings. I absolutely love it because it's got great greetings for the outside and the inside. It is an older set. It's from last year, I think. I believe it was last year, um, but it's my go-to Christmas set. I absolutely love this one. And this is actually also the stamp set that Laura and I are using for our 12 days of Christmas, which we are super excited about. So we've got this fun event that we've planned that um, where we're gonna share 12 different Christmas card ideas with you over the course of 12 days. And anybody who registers also gets invited to a private Facebook group where we're gonna share 
an additional 12 holiday project ideas. So they could be tags or gift card holders or more cards or 3D projects. So a variety of projects. Um, and the great thing about this 12 Days of Christmas is the cards that we've designed can be used with any patterned paper. So you choose your pattern paper and you choose your embellishment. All right, so we've got that on there. So I did post a link to where you can find more information on that. Um, registration just opened yesterday and it's a quick turnaround. Um, so it closes on the 29th. So if you wanna participate, make sure that you get your, your choices in early. So now I'm just going to attach this to my mossy meadow. So I did throw in some scraps of other card, like additional card stock, but I wanted to walk you through the bases. So how you can create this. And then this is gonna go on here. Now this is a piece of vellum. So, and you can see through vellum. So I'm gonna, th I'm gonna be mindful of this. This is gonna go on about here. And then this is gonna go on top. So I wanna put adhesive only from this bit up. So I'm just gonna flip this over just so that you can't see the adhesive in behind. So and then I'll center that on here like this. And I just realized that I forgot to cut my inside piece. So I'll have to go grab that in a moment. Okay, and then I'm gonna add adhesive again only to this upper portion and just to where I can see that mossy meadow underneath and that way I'm gonna move it up a bit so I'm going to center it side to side and kind of leave an even border here and here so then this will lift up like this and see you can't see the adhesive in behind there all right, so just bear with me for a minute. I'm gonna grab an extra piece of white cardstock because we need to add something to the inside so that we can have some place to write our message. So I'm gonna grab these dies and a piece of white cardstock. All right, so I've got a scrap piece of white cardstock, which would be the piece where we cut all these extra pieces from. And I wanna choose the die that is the same size as this one that's cut from the vellum. So here, now that I've got these dies out, I can confirm what sizes. So this one is the third smallest. So if we're, if we're counting this one as the smallest, it's the third smallest, and then the mossy meadow is the fourth smallest, and then this one would be the fifth smallest. So I'm just gonna head over to my die cutting machine and quickly cut this. All right, and we can set those aside. So hopefully my connection is okay because it seems like I'm trying to look for look at the comments on my iPad and my screen is frozen. But I think my phone looks okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up with the vellum one that's on there and add adhesive to the back. I'm just gonna make sure this is lined up and then I'm gonna to try to hold it in place and close my card. And I'll flip it over, make sure it's lined up, looks good. And so now I have space inside to write my message. Um, so we could leave the card like this, but I wanna make it a little bit, I wanna add a little bit of something to it. So because this has holly leaves on it, what I did was I used the Magical Meadow dies. There is a holly leaf in there. So I die cut two of those from some Mossy Meadow cardstock. 
and I'm just going to use my bone folder to kind of fold it up a little bit. And let's see, I think we're going to add them up here. So I'll add a little bit of multi-purpose glue. And we're just going to add those right there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this gold ribbon. This is from the gold and silver one eighth inch trim combo pack. This is one of our online exclusives. I love this ribbon. It's great for tying bows and not adding a lot of bulk to your projects. All right, and then we'll use a mini glue dot to adhere it. And that's gonna go right on there like that. And then I wanna finish it off with some gold gems. So these are our spark, I think these are called sparkle gems. Let me just check the name, make sure I'm telling you the right thing. Yes, sparkle gems. I'm gonna use some gold. So we'll add one larger one. I've got a little bit of ink right there, so I'm gonna strategically place that over top. And then we'll add another one right there. All right, so there is card number one. Isn't it pretty? So fun. All right, now card number two, we're gonna take that same design. So here, remember these, we started with the same base, except our patterns are reversed. This time I'm going to make it a portrait card rather than a landscape card. And I've gone ahead and I've cut a few things here. So I've used the deckled circles. Love these circle dies. I love how many you get. You get so many sized circles here. So I've used these and I've cut two that are exactly the same. And it is the one, two, three, four, fifth smallest deckled circle that I've used. I've cut two of them from some white cardstock. I also stamped that same Merry Christmas greeting and I fussy cut it. And I've got two of those holly leaves. All right, so this is gonna go right in the center here. And again, I'm going to be mindful of um, where I add my adhesive. So I'm just gonna add adhesive to half of it. Position this so that it's got an even border on either side. And then I'm gonna add adhesive to this. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna flip this. Same thing that I did on the last one. I'm gonna line this up and then close my card so that I've got somewhere to write a message on the inside. Now, if you wanted extra room or if you wanted to stamp a greeting on the inside, it, obviously, if you stamped your greeting on here, where would you write your message? So there's a couple ways that you can get around that. You can add another one of these circles here and you can stamp your greeting on here and then write your message on here. But again, this is still pretty limited in size. So if you like to write long messages in your cards, then what you could do is just adjust this so that it is a full card. So instead of four and a quarter by five and a half, make it a full size card. So it's eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter so that this would open up. So you would open this up to reveal another greeting and then you would open this up to reveal your message. Okay, so that's a way around that. I'm not a very wordy person with my cards, so I'm quite all right with just a tiny little space. Okay, so now I've got some of our gold twine and I'm just going to tie a bow and I'm going to make it a little, little on the large side, might make my loops a little larger and this is going to go right in the center. I'll use a mini glue dot for this. 
Um, do I want it in the center? Let's see. This is going to go over top. Yeah, we'll put it in the center. All right. That's right. <laughs> and if you make it small, people don't expect long notes, right? It takes the pressure off. Okay, so now I'm going to add some dimensionals to this. I'll add one up here, one over here. And now this one's kind of twisted. I'll add my greeting. So I'm changing this up a little bit on the fly from my sample. So I'm kind of winging this. All right, now we've got this, I think, is that straight? Yeah, I think it's okay. All right. I'm gonna curl these up. Add a little bit of adhesive behind. And I'm gonna tuck this kind of right here. And then this one, I wanna add some berries and I don't have any red gems. So I'm gonna use gold. I'm gonna use one big one and then a couple little ones. So again, these are from the sparkle gems. I love these gems. So then we've got three little berries on there and there is card number two. So again, we started with exactly the same layout, just reversed our pattern paper, but the cards look completely different. Okay, let's move on to card number three. All right, so we are gonna bring in this one. So remember, this is the one where we created a little pocket. So we needed, need to add it to our base. And our base is Mossy Meadow. And it's got a little bit of a wider border. And then we're gonna do the same thing with card number four. So if you're joining in late, we are creating five cards from one piece of 12 by 12 pattern paper. And I walked you through cutting the patterned paper um, at the beginning of the video. Okay, so here are inserts. So remember I mentioned the, the white piece and the four and what was it? Four and a half by three and a half inch pieces that you wanted to cut from that white. Those are for your inserts for these cards. Okay, so for our first one, we're gonna take a long, narrow scrap of white and we're gonna stamp a greeting. We're gonna use the Seasons Greetings from that same stamp set that we've been using, so the Brightest Glow stamp set. And I'm gonna stamp it with Mossy Meadow. Just make sure that it's straight. Okay, and we might as well stamp our other greeting while we're at it. So I've also gone ahead and cut from that same white piece two deckled circles. So I've used the one, two, three, fourth smallest, third and fourth smallest that I've cut. And we're gonna stamp the all is merry and bright. Again, with Mossy Meadow. Okay. All right, got a little bit of green on my fingers here. Okay, we're gonna work on this one first. I'm gonna angle cut this. And I'm gonna trim this 
so that it's a little bit shorter, but I do wanna leave a little bit of space on the left-hand side. And I'm just gonna curl it so it looks kind of wavy. I'm gonna add a dimensional here and then some flat adhesive. Actually, before we do that, we wanna do one other thing. I'm gonna take some of this gold ribbon and just my seal adhesive. I'm gonna roll that on there and I'm just gonna do a little loop here. Like that. Now we can add some adhesive here and here. So on the two bits where it would be flat, line that up with the edge. Make sure it's straight. And then we'll take some of our twine and tie a bow. And again, we'll use a mini glue dot to adhere this. That'll go on there like that. And then we'll add a couple of our gold dots. Uh, let's do one here and then we'll grab a smaller one. All right. So now we've got a card with a little pocket. So this would be great. You could tuck a gift card in here. You could write your message on here. Um, it's really quite quite simple. So that is card number three. Card number four, we're going to follow the same basic layout, except we're just going to change up our focal point a little bit. So I'm going to add this on here. Again, being mindful, I want it to stick up a little bit, so I don't want to add adhesive to the top. I'm just going to add adhesive to the bottom and pop that on there like that. And then we're going to add a little bit of seal adhesive. I'm going to kind of put this at an angle, trim it. And then again, I'm going to take some of our gold twine, tie a bow, and I want to make a little bit larger loops. Trim that and then we'll use a mini glue dot to adhere that on there. And then we're going to add some dimensionals so that we can add this top greeting. This keeps twisting a little bit so I'm just going to use a mini glue dot right there. Another one there. We'll start with that. I may need to add a couple more. And I'm going to add this over top. All right. And then again, bring in our gold dots. There we go. And now we've got another pocket card. So that is card number four. Now we're gonna bring in our leftover pieces. So these are the pieces that were left over from that two by 12 inch strip that we had at the bottom. And we're gonna bring in our thick white card base. And we'll just fold this in half. And we're gonna take three of these pieces and we're gonna distress them. So I'm just, I've got my paper snips open and I'm just going around the edges. This just gives some added texture. So each one of these pieces is one by five inches. So we're gonna do two of them 
with the holly showing and just one with the polka dots showing. four sides. This just gives it a little bit of added texture. I love the look of this. And it's something that everybody can do because, I mean, as long as you own a pair of scissors, it's easy enough to do, right? Okay, we're going to do it like this. Okay, so I'm going to stick the middle one down first. I'll add these to both sides. Leaving about an eighth of an inch in between. All right. Okay, so now I still have these two pieces left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece and add it to the inside of my card. And actually I have this piece left as well from when I cut my green. So I think I'm gonna put this on here, leaving it just a smidge of the green showing. And then we'll add this this to here and we'll trim off the excess. Okay, and then this piece, now this is, a, it's a little bit too big for what I want to do with it. So I'm going to trim this. So this is two inches. We'll trim it down to, let's trim it down to one. No, let's trim it down to one and a quarter. And then we're going to flag the end of this and then this is going to go in here and I'm going to tuck it underneath here. So all these little scraps are great for decorating the insides of your card. So we'll tuck that underneath there. I think this needs a little bit more adhesive. Isn't that cute? So fun. And then this piece, I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna flag the end of this. I'll add adhesive to the back of this. And then this is gonna get tucked underneath here. All right, so this is the only scrap that I have left. I will go back and add that to a different project, but let's figure out this piece. So I'm gonna repeat this idea on this card. So I'm gonna stamp the all is bright. And since it was stamped in Mossy Meadow last time, I'm gonna stamp it in Mossy Meadow again just to save having to clean it. And then we can add this to our card.
card base. And this time I'm gonna do a little bit of adhesive going this way and I'm gonna bring in my gold ribbon Kind of go back and forth. Like that. And then instead of the gold, I think I'm going to use white this time. So before, for the last card, I used gold on gold, but this one I think I'm going to use a little bit of white make my loops quite large. And we'll grab a mini glue dot. Stick that on there and we'll add a couple dimensionals. gonna go on here and then we'll add our dwell our, our gold gems we'll do one there and there's my other oh here it is uh, let's grab another small one here All right, okay, so there is our fifth card. And I still have this little scrap of DSP. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this card in and just flag the end of this. We'll add a little bit of adhesive here. Pop that on there. And then I'm gonna flag this end. So on the front of this insert, you can add, you can add a greeting, you can add your message, or even just a greeting. And then we're gonna fold this over. You can write your message on the back. You could add a gift card just using a mini glue dot on the back or even on the front. Let's use our bone folder and just make sure that this sticks. There we go. And now we've used every last piece of that pattern, piece of pattern paper that we cut into. All right, so let me bring back the cards. Okay, so let's go in order here. This was card number one. This was card number two. This was card number three, number four, and number five. So I went with gold accents on these ones. For my initial ones, I did a few things that are a little bit different. So this card, here's another alternate. This one, I used the same shape dies. I used the same holly leaves. I just added the berries instead of the ribbon and my greeting goes up and down. So this is a portrait card compared to a landscape card. I actually think I prefer the landscape. So there's an alternate for that one. For this one here, I used, again, very similar things. I just omitted the twine on my original sample. So there's that. And then for this one, again, exactly the same, except I used um, white with silver ribbon, the silver twine. I stamped my greeting in black, and then I added the silver gems. And then... For this guy, again, 
very similar. So silver edged ribbon, silver twine, silver dots instead of the gold. And I omitted that little piece. And then again here, I use silver and silver. So there we go. I've used two full sheets of 12 by 12 pattern paper, created 10 cards, and there is no waste. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure that you check out um, Laura and I's 12 Days of Christmas. Again, there is a link in the description where you can find all the information because we'd love to have you join us. And you do not need to have, you can choose your pattern paper. So if you still have pattern paper on your wish list, this is a great way to get it and to use it. All right, thanks so much for watching. Have a fabulous week. Take care.